Today's video is on the third member of the Calyx, everyone's absolute favourite, Charmy B. But seriously, does anyone know of a single human soul who will say Charmy B is their favourite member of the Calyx, never mind a top tier Sonic character? No? Well, I might be the first, because I have to say that I've really enjoyed my time with the guy, and unless the final three members really pull something special out of the bag, I have very little to complain about here that could jeopardise his position as numero uno. I'll try and be a little more constructive with my feedback here, as a fair few people commenting on the last video weren't huge fans of how he did a fair amount of ragging on Mighty and didn't give many ways to improve, which is fair enough. But without further ado, let's get into it. Charmy only really has two abilities in his moveset, alongside some modifications to how he moves, which makes him the simplest member of the Codex to cover so far. That's very much in character of him, Charmy is an incompetent dunce, and I feel it's very important that I can connect with the character and act as they would act, so two things to think about is all I can really manage when in that sort of state. Here's a sock twist though, Charmy, being a tiny little bee, is quite fragile. This is his passive ability slash weakness, as he will take significantly more knockback from enemies than the average SRP2 character, but does gain the ability to run on water. To be honest, this part of his passive movement changes has pretty minimal impact on you if you're a veteran SRP2 pro, such as myself. Running on water is a circumstantially beneficial ability when playing as anyone else, but considering how Zami's moveset means that being anywhere near water in any stage is probably a sign that you're doing things wrong, or at least inefficiently, it's even less impactful here. As for the extra knockback, just get good. On a serious note though, this level of increased knockback isn't a huge deal even if you aren't that experienced in the game, like sure, you will bounce back further but I found it was rarely to an extent that it actually made much of an impact. The best way I can describe how impactful the change is, is that it just meant I was not closer to an edge rather than off of one, if that makes sense. You're also able to enter small gaps without needing to do anything, which allows Sami to take some shortcuts, but again, it's not a real game changer in my experience. What does set Sami apart from the rat race is his excellent verticality. I'm sure that by just looking at the guy, most people would expect him to have some sort of flight ability, which he does, but it's a pretty unique implementation of the idea. Unlike most forms of flight, where you either mass or hold the jump button to lift yourself smoothly into the sky, Sami's quick ascent is more of a series of powerful boosts that need to be stringed together for maximum effect. Holding jump in midair will cause Sami to slow down and begin charging up. I found that holding down the ability didn't seem to much affect how far or high you'd go using it, but charging is the best item I can think of for what he's doing, and upon release, you get a nice vertical boost. Whether that is angled, or a straight upwards rise, seems to be based off which direction you're holding during that charge up time, but you can do this up to three times in the air, so you can get a really good mixture of vertical and horizontal movement that allows you to get practically anywhere. Especially when used in tandem with his spin ability and the fact that Sami is less affected by gravity than others, you actually get a lot of control over where Sami goes during this, and he can often travel deceptively far by properly spacing these quicker sense apart so as to get the maximum potential of each and every one. These quicker sense can be combined with Sami's second ability, the Stinger Dash. On the ground, this acts like a pseudo spin dash, giving you a burst of speed so as to blast off from a standstill relatively quickly. It does have some unique properties to it though, like the quick ascent, I felt that charging it didn't do much, so it's almost best to just tap it and go, especially when that's combined with the fact that because Charmy doesn't need to roll, the stinger dash can be performed while moving, so it can even sort of function like a spin drift. I didn't use this version of the ability that much though, not because it's not good or anything like that, but because I may have kept forgetting it's there. I mean. Sami moves quickly enough as is, and you're not on the ground that often or that long most of the time anyway, so you might think that means the Stinger Dash isn't that useful. Au contraire my friend, this is an incredibly useful secondary ability, because it can still be used while in the air. When used in this context, the Stinger Dash instead becomes a sort of stomp, which after I critiqued Mighty for centering on one of these, you might think I would dislike. Not so though, because I think it works quite well here. For a start, it isn't some sort of instantaneous plummet down to your death like Mighty's could quite easily become, because it'd be cancelled into a quick ascent. Though I lack the reflectors needed to quite get this, 
I imagine you could almost allow Tommy to fly completely horizontally using this, because the end lag of this ability is really minimal and you can cancel it very quickly. It is also really handy for stalling flight if you run out of quick ascent. You don't completely stop moving forward when charging either of Tommy's abilities, and when combined with the fact that the Stinger Dash can lunge you just that little further forward, it can be an effective way to get those final few millimeters needed to reach another platform. I think Tommy has my favorite moveset of the Chaotic so far. I complained a bit in my SBO review about how I didn't like how he was quite stop start with his abilities making him crawl to a halt constantly, so you might think I'll dislike Tommy's for basically doing the same thing, but I don't know. I just think it feels better here, and I don't think my flow state is interrupted by the constant pauses in the same way. I can't quite place why. Maybe it's something psychological about how you don't need to hold back to make him go up like you did with Espio, or maybe it's to do with the fact that you still are moving forward very slightly, but it just feels a lot better here for some reason. I do have complaints though, all directed at the Stinger Das. The grounded version gets no complaints from me, but then I barely used it, so it might just be bad and I didn't realise. I do have two problems with the air version though. Firstly, it seems to be a bit inconsistent. Like the Quick Ascent, the Stinger Das has two directions it can travel in. Either it can travel diagonally or directly on the vertical axis. I assumed the game would select which version is used based off what movement buttons are being used, like with the Quick Ascent, and indeed this often did select the intended version. But every so often, it's do the alternate version regardless, so I don't know for sure how it works. I thought maybe something to do with speed, but then someone on my Discord server said it has awkward homing capabilities, so that, that might be it, I don't know. Secondly, it really needs some additional boss killing capabilities. Sami isn't a character with an automatically damaging jump, and so the Stinger Dash is your usual way to deal with enemies. That works fine for most of them, one hit and hardly moving, they're easy targets. Against comparatively mobile and tanky bosses though, it becomes Sami's greatest drawback. With no AoE on the point of impact, you must hit the opponent directly, which is easier said than done with no way to properly aim the Stinger Dash beyond vague hopes and dreams. You could argue that it's a similar case to Amy Rose and I just need to get good, but that ignores the fact that this is an ability you need to correctly aim, and not just a sudden addition of a damaging hitbox, so it's far more difficult to land. And with Sami's tiny damage box, you do need to be spot on. I don't think adding an AoE impact is particularly appropriate. Sami is tiny and very light, so it makes no sense, but there are other alternatives to make the ability work. If the Stinger Dash is supposed to have homing capabilities, you could make it... Well, I have to say work, because if it does have them, they're so catastrophically weak I don't even know if they actually exist. Alternatively, make the Stinger Dash do extra damage. Sami's Stinger is soon to be a surprisingly dangerous weapon, so I'd argue doing double damage could be justified to offset the difficulty of even landing a hit. Ignoring my rant on one particular animation for Mighty, the Chaotix has so far been pretty consistently excellent when it comes to spriting, and Charmy B is no exception. He's in a bit of a different situation to the previous two characters, in that he's the first Chaotix member to not be some level of focused, determined, serious hero, and is instead significantly goofier. I don't think his personality signs through quite as much as the previous two, though that may be because this Tommy is based off his incarnation from Knuckles' Chaotix rather than his more familiar, modern variant. As best as I can find, Tommy really didn't have any personality in that game. He wasn't really that cool like Espio Mighty, but also wasn't as goofy as Vector, Heavy and Bomb. Therefore, you get this sort of mass up between the two versions of Tsami. He's fundamentally based off his appearance in Knuckles' Chaotix, but he has been slightly modified to look a little more friendly and childlike. There's no point getting into the technical quality of the sprites, they're all fantastically well coloured, flow well into each other, etc etc. One thing I did like was that I didn't notice until re-watching my recorded footage is the little detail that using a Stinger Dash would cause Tommy to put on his goggles temporarily, which is a really cute detail that I could like a lot. In fact, my only real problem is that I think his effects are pretty boring. SBOs were great, as were Mighty's, plus he had a little squash and stretch on top, but Tommy's just feel a little boring and lifeless. Maybe just making some more pronounced wind effects would be enough to fix this. And then I'd say Tommy would look near enough perfect.
overall, and this may be an unpopular opinion based off some of the tier lists I've had sent over my Discord server, I think Charmy B has been my favourite member of the Codex yet. Haha. <laughs> I think he's certainly the most powerful one yet, that's for sure, but it's the kind of power that gives you a lot of freedom to make your own paths over cheap tricks and gimmicks. It's not difficult to do well playing as him, but getting a good time does feel earned. His moveset is near perfect in standard play and is only really let down by its inability to cope with bosses, but I think a few tweaks and adjustments here and there could even that out. Sprites are great, and without an equivalent of the Mighty Run that's a poorly thought out reference to Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, I have nothing major to complain about. Just some better ability effects would wrap the whole thing up with a flourish. I honestly struggled between giving Tommy a 9 or even a 10, but I think those little, tiny problems are currently holding him back and keeping him stuck at that lower score. Honestly though, if the remaining members of the Codex don't match up, I might increase that score to account for the power of hindsight. As it is, I hope you enjoyed the video, are ready for the investigator himself, and ciao.